So one of the greatest things about being a software developer is that you have the ability to work remote, right? Especially after COVID started, a lot of developer positions just moved fully remote. And now a couple of years into it, a lot of developers have the choice. You know, you can either stay remote, you can either go to the office. That's kind of the setup that I have right now. And honestly, it is great. Like being able to wake up a bit later, you don't have to commute, you go to your own bathroom. And it's something that I'm extremely grateful for. Before COVID, I had never had the experience of working remotely. Uh, and now that I'm able to work remotely, it's really something that I'm grateful for and that I really appreciate. However, working remotely does have its challenges especially if you're a new developer and even more so if your first dev job is remote. If you're a brand new developer, you're going into your first full-time position and it's completely remote, there will definitely be some challenges that you have to overcome. If you join a new company, right, you probably had a couple of interviews, you spoke to a handful of people at most face to face, right, over some video call. But one of the challenges when you join a new company is actually developing relationships, meeting people. If your team has trust and a good rapport, then that'll like bleed into the projects that you're working on and it'll make the whole company better. But when you're working remotely, when you start a new job and it's completely remote and you don't know anyone, you, don't, you can't put any names to any faces, it's really tough to get to that productivity. So what I would recommend is if you're a new developer, you just if you're a brand new developer and it's your first full-time job and you just joined a company, right? I would reach out to as many people as I can on Slack, especially if you have any questions or anything, feel free to message any single person you want as many times as you want. You know, drop a hello, like how's it going, introduce yourself and then develop a relationship because going forward, that'll make your life a lot easier. If you already have a relationship with someone, if they know who you are, if you guys are like comfortable speaking to each other, when you reach out with a question or some sort of request, the odds of them responding to you much quicker because they already know you are a lot higher, right? And not only that, but it's just nice to develop some relationships some friendships with uh, different members of your company, especially ones that you wouldn't have normal communication with, right? When you join a big company and you're fully remote, it's pretty hard to tell like what everyone's doing especially if there's like a, a group slack channel right where everyone's talking the odds are most of the people there you have no idea who they are you have no idea what they do and you're just confined to like the team that you're working with when you're in person with a team it's a lot easier you know you can go out for lunch you can just talk more casually but when it's over slack or zoom i feel like the com the communication is mostly work related so bridging that gap between just communicating work related and then having more casual conversations and developing real relationships for me is one of the most difficult things and one of the biggest challenges about working remote and it's definitely something that if it's your first full-time job as a software developer you're gonna have to get over but don't worry just reach out to as many people as you can and try to develop some sort of communication some sort of relationship with them now in in terms of being a new developer and ramping up or onboarding, you know, getting familiar with the code base, picking up your first couple of tasks and getting to work, in my opinion, the difference between doing this remotely and doing it in person is not that crazy. The only difference is when you're alone in person, there's, you have to be more accountable for yourself, right? And really get to work and don't get distracted, right? Working from home, you have your TV, you have like food readily available, any snacks. It could be really easy to get distracted and not be as productive as you can be. In my opinion, that's the biggest challenge when you join a new company and you're working remotely, it really is keeping yourself accountable. Because if you're in an office with other people, naturally you're not gonna be as distracted because you're surrounded by your peers, you're working, everyone's working, and you're in that kind of environment. But when you're at home, it's a completely different story and you have to be a lot more disciplined. And the odds are your teammates know you're onboarding, that you're ramping up, they're expecting a ton of questions from you. So when you're asking them over Slack, right, they're gonna get back to you pretty quickly because everyone's in the loop of you know what, what you have to do. Obviously it's not as fast as just turning around and you know talking to your teammate when they're right next to you, but it's still pretty good. And in my opinion, joining a new company, ramping up onboarding, there, there aren't that many challenges when you're doing it remotely, especially, you know, I just joined Amazon in February and I had to go through the whole onboarding process, get, a for, get my first couple of tasks. And it was pretty smooth. As long as you just put the effort in, you try your hardest. There's not really any difference between doing that in person and online. Today's a bit of a shorter video, but these two challenges are, in my opinion, the biggest things you have to get over when working remotely, right? You have to develop meaningful relationships with your team and establish some sort of trust, some sort of rapport, communication online, which is a bit more difficult to doing over Slack or Zoom than in person. And the second thing is you have to keep yourself accountable, develop ways to not get distracted. When you're at home, it's really easy to get distracted 
And what you have to develop is this a, a sort of environment where you're able to really focus, really concentrate for a long period of time. This can be called like the flow state, if you guys have ever heard of this. But for me personally, I like to play some like lo-fi instrumental music or like some Skyrim soundtrack, maybe get a candle going and put, put my headphones in and really just focus on the work that I'm doing and get really concentrated. The biggest challenge here is that you just have to find what works for you what kind of environment you succeed in most, what time of day. It could be like later on in the day or in early morning where you're more productive. That could be the times where you want to do your most intense work. Figure out what kind of music, you know, even what kind of lighting you need. Just really, if you're at home all the time, you have to develop an atmosphere that is conducive to you being productive and you being focused and concentrated, right? You can't just have your phone or like a YouTube video always open. It's really counterproductive if you want to get a lot of work done. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. These two challenges I think are pretty universal and that everyone will really experience them when they're working remotely. It'll just be a bit tougher if it's your first dev job ever and you're working completely remote. There are a couple of challenges and hurdles that you have to overcome, but if you try your hardest and if you're not scared to reach out with questions, then there's no reason why you can't succeed. So as always, if you've enjoyed the video, I would greatly appreciate a like and a comment down below if you guys think there's anything I missed or if you want to share your own personal experiences about working remotely. I hope you guys have enjoyed and as always, take it easy and enjoy your coding.